Welcome back to Reddit Aliens, everyone. Hello, I'm John, your host. Today, for the next hour, we will be dealing with a classic topic that we all have an answer to. So let's do it. What is the strangest thing that has ever happened to you? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy. When I was a child, I fell asleep watching Nickelodeon. It was the show with the slime. Anyway, I was woken up because the host was grabbing the camera and shaking it, saying, Wake up! Insert my name. Wake up! Insert my name. I sat there in shock. Then the host just came to the camera and looked dead at it and told me to wake up. Turns out, the camera lady and I had the exact same name, but still, freak me the F out. Just to add, my name isn't uncommon, but it's definitely not common like the Sarahs or Jessicas of my time. I was looking some doc work, and I'm pretty sure I walked into a major drug deal, so I just pretended I was looking or something whistling, took like a ledger off a table and went, ah, here we go, been looking for you, and walked away like it was nothing. This was in the 80s, so I'm pretty sure it's fine to tell this. Was sleeping and woke up to a really nasty, rotten smell at the foot of my bed. Was a shadow person just standing there. Then it moved closer to me and slapped me around the face. The next day my grandfather died. Here's a long one. I hope you enjoy. A few years ago I traveled to Mexico City for the holidays. I would fly there and spend a week in the city before taking a bus to another city, also in Mexico, to visit relatives for Christmas. Before the trip, a friend of mine asked me if I could take a present for a friend of hers that lived in the Mexico City. It was a t-shirt. I agreed to take it since it wasn't heavy and took practically no space in my luggage. My friend gave me the number of her friend, who would be receiving the t-shirt, so we could coordinate and meet up one day. It turns out this girl lived in the north of the city, while I was staying in the south. For those who don't know, the city is absolutely humongous and it would take close to two hours each way to get to her part of the city by public transport. Since neither of us wanted to waste an afternoon on this, we agreed to notify the other if we were going to be in a more central location in the following days. And a week passed, and we didn't seem to coincide. I would be taking a bus to another city for Christmas, but I wasn't too worried. I was going to return to Mexico City after Christmas since my flight back home left from there so there was still a chance to deliver this t-shirt. In the morning I was due to take my bus, I arrived to the northern bus station, which is a fairly big building, and the place was crowded as hell. There had been some kind of problem and all departures were delayed. People had been waiting for hours. To illustrate how crowded it was, imagine you were at the front of a Metallica concert, but everybody, me included, was carrying a suitcase. It was total and absolute chaos. I managed to navigate through the crowd to my gate. There, a lady with a megaphone was trying to direct and organize the crowd into waiting in line to no avail. My bus was delayed as well, so there was nothing to do but wait. After a few minutes, someone calls my name. I turn and I see a young woman who looked unfamiliar. I raked my brain for a couple of seconds trying to place her and concluded that I most definitely hadn't seen this woman before in my life. I asked her if we knew each other. She told me, I am name, you have something for me? And I was confused for a moment until it clicked that it was the name of the girl I was going to deliver the t-shirt to, it was her. She explained she recognized me from photos in the Facebook profile of our mutual friend. I was dumbstruck. It would have been difficult for someone who knew me to spot me in the middle of the crowd, let alone someone who had never really seen me in real life. I told her that, in fact, I had her present with me, in my suitcase. I started politely asking the strangers around me to make space so I could lay my suitcase flat on the ground and open it. It was that crowded. While I was doing so, the girl asked where I was traveling to. I told her, to which she replied, me too. She then asked me with what company I was traveling, and it turns out we were both traveling with the same company. I told her I was on the 815 bus and she told me, me too. We were on the exact same bus. We agreed I'd give her the present once I arrived at our destination, where it would be surely less chaotic. Once there, I gave her the t-shirt and wished a Merry Christmas, and we both went on our separate ways. Given the sheer size of the city, the sheer amount of people and chaos at the bus station, and the fact we didn't actually know each other, I can say that the chances we'd be on the same bus, and that she'd recognize me from photos on someone else's Facebook profile, 
are nothing short of astronomical. I would venture to say that if you had all of this happen to you, that you and that person were meant to meet, and hopefully you guys kept in touch, because that's pretty astronomical. I was sitting in a traffic light, and a policeman knocked on my window and asked me to pull over. Turned out, my car and the car in front both had the same registration number. We later established that a mistake at the dealership meant that two cars had gone out the door in the same day with the same plates. Months later, we happened to be sitting at the same traffic light, and somehow a policeman spotted it. I can't even fathom the chances of it happening. I was at a concert in London, and once it finished, I had about an hour to catch my train home, which would be about two hours or so outside of the city. But I met a couple of folks during the show, agreed to have a quick drink with them before heading home. One led to another led to another, and I hopelessly missed my train. No great disaster. I've got friends in London who've always been happy to let me crash. One of them even works nights, so I can just text him and pick up a key to his place. So, I hop on the underground and head in his direction. Then I straight up just fall asleep at the end of the way, at the end of the line about 45 minutes later. Not ideal. And I see that I get a reply from my friend. He's away for the weekend. Things are now looking not good. So I head out to the platform expecting to have to travel back towards somewhere central and start looking for some other options pretty damn quickly. There's one other person on the platform. They start heading towards me and I'm feeling effing nervous until they get closer and I realize I know this girl. We went to school together. She moved away when we were 17 and the last time I heard from her she was living just outside of Stockholm. Turns out she still is. She's just in London for the weekend and is meeting a very generous friend at the station for a lift who apparently has no problem doing a little night driving. Even more of a coincidence, they're going to my hometown. Tagged along, had a lovely time catching up, and wildly against the odds I got home safely. More or less around the time what I was hoping to in the first place. I was like 10 years old and my mom was going through a really tough time. She came home one day during this period and was sitting down staring off into space. I was across the room from her and I looked over at her and I swear that somehow I was able to see her human experience. I was like sucked into her consciousness for a moment. I could see her thoughts like I was having them and I feel her despair. She was looking back at all the people in her life. I could see them in my mind space even though I don't know them and I could hear the narrative in her head. She was wondering how she had messed up so bad and searching her memory for where she went wrong in life, and I could feel her hopelessness in a way that I cannot describe. It was truly like her guard got let down, and I could see into her soul. I wish I would have comforted her in that moment, but I was so weirded out that I didn't know what to do. It was like I had inadvertently witnessed a very private and vulnerable moment that wasn't meant for me. My dad and I flew back to QLD from VIC after attending his nan's funeral. She was a kind and beautiful soul, and I miss her very much to this day. Not long after arriving to his house, we were standing near his bedroom door inside the bedroom, face to face, having a play argument. I finished my sentence to him, then asked him, Did you see that? He smiled and nodded. We both admitted to seeing a green sparkle in the corner of our eye in the same spot. It was like a tiny cloud of green sparkles that were sparkling and falling in slow-mo and lasted like a second. I also immediately checked the room for sunshine or sunset cracks through the curtain, but there was nothing. I had a hard time getting to sleep that night. I already talked about it once. When I was maybe eight, I went to a mountain school trip. We were six by bedrooms and bunk beds. One night, I saw a white figure skiing in the room. He went from ceiling to floor like he was skiing down a hill. It was a very distinct figure. I then felt my friend on the bed under mine knocking on my mattress. She asked me if I was asleep. I told her no. Then she asked me if I saw it too. It scared us. We had some difficulty sleeping for the rest of that trip. It isn't that strange in hindsight, but at the time it was absolutely mind shattering. I had a very bad time the first time I did mushrooms. The trip was mostly spent crying in my room, but as I was coming down, I went out to the living room because I heard my roommates get home. I was just about to order a pizza on my phone when I looked at my dog and thought to myself, I wonder if she'd like to go for a walk. And in that moment, it just hit me that I was part of the world and I could interact with the world and that my actions could have a direct effect on things around me. Like if I put the leash on the dog 
and took her for a walk, she'd be on a walk, which she loves, and she wouldn't have been able to do that without me. Or I could order a pizza, and a pizza would appear at my location, and it would all be because of me. I guess somewhere during the trip, I kind of forgot what it meant to exist, and suddenly becoming aware of it like it was the kind of a mind F. Well, psilocybin certainly can make you feel connected to everything around you, so I think this is a action to show himself. Hope you enjoyed it, and sorry it started bad, but ended well. Not that I would know. This was way back. I was going to school in Buffalo. I'm from Michigan. It was 1am, and as I'm walking past the phone to go to bed, the phone rings. I answer, and an operator says, Collect call from Hiram Herndon, my father, although I am not using real names, but not the most common name out there. I was startled and half asleep, really needed to be in bed. I said, This is Haley Herndon. Hiram is calling me. My mind is spinning. If my father is calling me at 1am, this can't be good. On the other hand, why would my father be calling me collect? I was a broke student, and he was an exec with a car company. There was a moment of silence. I repeated my name, another short pause, and the call disconnected. I didn't call my father right then. If it was a real emergency, he would have called back right away, and I didn't want to wake my parents in the middle of the night for a prank. Called the next day, and my parents had no idea what was going on. For me, the pricky part was that whoever called me had somewhat unusual last name as well as my father's name. This was also the same year I started receiving my subscription to UFO magazine. Although I had never subscribed to it, and no one could explain why I was receiving it, the magazine was good for a few laughs every month. Towards the end of Desert Storm, I was deep in Iraq out in the middle of nowhere while on recce looking for a Scud missile launcher never found any. We were so far out in the middle of some valley we didn't expect to meet up with any large Iraqi unit or even have contact. In fact, we avoided it because of our mission. At one point, we came over a wadi on the other side of Iraq checkpoint. We were in two soft-top unarmored Humvees, and all we had for weapons were M16s, a saw, and our pistols. We stopped as soon as we saw them, and they were as surprised as us. I got out, gave a tentative wave, and one of them waved back and we turned around and got the F out of there. They could have chopped us to bits, but probably thought we had a large force in the area. I was around four to five years old when this happened. My parents were sleeping, and of course it was nighttime, so my younger uncle and I were awake. My room was dimly lit on the TV on. I watched Disney Junior. I sat on my bed and saw this random black figure. It had the structure of a man with at least three faces on it. All of them seemed to have the face of my great uncle. He was alive at the time, so it was pretty weird. One face was him drinking something, maybe coffee. Another was him talking, and the other was him sleeping. The figure was standing up. Then suddenly the faces looked angrier, and all of them looked like they were yelling at me. It also looked ready to run at me. I ran to my younger uncle and saw him on the bed with his girlfriend with no clothes on. I went with my younger uncle to my room to find that the figure wasn't there. I've also dreamed about a shadow man staring at me with eyes wide open and smiling at me. Good times. This happened when I was sick, which probably explains it, but it was creepy at the time. So I was sick, and I had gone to bed early. I had woken up in the middle of the night and heard my parents shouting for me. I got up quickly and made my way out of my room, but I couldn't find them. I went to walk back to my room as I couldn't hear them anymore, but then I heard my little sister crying but I could find her either. Then I felt myself getting sleepy. I will point out it was pitch black in the middle of the night. Suddenly I woke up to the sun shining in my face and being stood upright in the middle of the landing. My parents were shaking me while my sister was crying. Apparently, they had found me stood there, like uh, Chrissy from Stranger Things, and didn't know what was happening. The dream was so real though. It felt like I was in a different reality, but my hearing had stayed here which was why I could hear them. This is gonna sound odd, but here we go. I've had future dreams for a while. It started when I was young, like I would dream of one of my classmates saying something and then they would say it a few days later. I never really thought anything of it until I dreamt my uncle's girlfriend at the time talking to my mom, saying she had gotten married to my uncle in secret and was pregnant with their second kid. Well, I told my family and my mom didn't believe me. Sure enough, a few days later, 
My mom forgot about me telling her, and we bump into my uncle's girlfriend at like Walmart, and she starts talking to my mom, and she says she has news, and nine-year-old me goes, oh, I already had a dream about this. So they asked me for more info, and it was true. That's when I found out not everyone dreams like this. Now, I usually keep quiet when I realize to not freak people out because I've dreamt about some convos months before. One time when I was a kid, my mom was working and my dad was overnight at my uncle's to help him with some engineering and dad stuff. I was in my room asleep with my TV on. I was afraid of the dark and just woke up because on the TV a character screamed. I couldn't fall asleep for some time after that, but when I almost did, the doors started shaking. I was so scared that I just put the blanket on top of me. When my mom came to check on me when she arrived from work, I was all covered in sweat and had trouble breathing. When I was seven or eight, I went to the park with my older sister and her friend. We were enjoying ourselves and it was almost time to go home for the night. We heard someone say, hey. When we turned to look at where this person was, we saw a completely naked man on the other side of the chain linked fence. We were freaked right out. He put his uh, genitalia through the fence and told us to come to him. We booked it out of there as fast as we could. When we got home, we locked all the windows and doors. We peeked out the window and saw the same guy on a bicycle with clothing on now, riding down our street, looking for us. I dreamt that I walked outside and all of my friends were standing in the yard looking at the sky. They each had one hand on their forehead as if they were trying to keep the sun out of their eyes. I was homeschooled, but my friends weren't, so they shouldn't have been home. No one noticed or acknowledged me. I kept asking questions. What are you guys doing here? Why aren't you at school? What are you looking at? No one answered. I heard a loud booming sound in the sky and I looked up. There were two planes flying overhead partially on fire. The fire wasn't that noticeable, but the smoke was dark and thick. Suddenly one of my friends looked at me and spoke in a very monotone and eerie voice. It certainly wasn't his voice. His gaze was beyond intense. He said, They are coming. They are going to hit the towers. I woke up immediately after that. I was super freaked out. I can't explain it. The dream wasn't just realistic. I felt it in my bones like a vibration. I told my sister and mom, but they kept saying it was just a dream. I remember being lethargic and just staring at the floor for hours. I had shivers. I didn't even go outside to play. The next day, the towers had been hit. All of my friends were sent home early, and they were dressed in the exact clothes they had it on in my dream. The creepiest part is when my friends suggested we salute the sky in respect for those who had died. When they did this, they looked exactly like how they did in my dream. I had just assumed they were trying to keep the light out of their eyes, but they were saluting. I will never forget the way my mom and sister looked at me. They were horrified and shocked. We never really talked about it after that. I was hanging out with a friend at like midnight. We drove to this one big dark parking lot in town. There was absolutely nobody there besides us as far as we knew. I walked out into the darkness to take a pee and suddenly got this intense feeling of dread and felt that we needed to leave now. Looked around, nothing was going on. Couldn't see or hear anybody. Then I hustled back to the car. I get in and my friend looks like she's seen a ghost. I ask if she's okay and with a shaky voice she says, we need to leave now. Since I had the same feeling, I didn't question it and just drove away. No idea what that was all about, but it was weird. If you have a feeling of dread and that immediacy to leave an area, that should be reason enough to go. If your friend is with you and have the same feeling, run. I had an incredibly lucid recurring nightmare once that was almost identical to reality. The only thing that was different was that there was this marionette with a paper plate for a face that would sometimes appear and touch me, resetting the dream to me, waking up and going about my routine. I had the dream about 20 times in one night. Every time the marionette would appear in my pantry, in my closet, come out of one of my binders, or sometimes it would be the bus driver. I was 100% sure that I was awake during all of the dreams, since I had no reason to believe otherwise until the marionette appeared. I could see my hands, I could think vividly and recall what happened the previous day. I could pinch myself and have it feel normal, and nothing was out of the ordinary. The dream ended somewhere in the low 20s when the marionette appeared in my shed after school, so I took the hatchet and killed it. I remember that on the 12th time exactly, 
I made it through all of my classes, where I took notes in history. What was weird was that when I woke up and actually went to school for real, the notes I remembered were correct, and they were about the Panic of 1837, American history. I had never even heard of it before my dream, and subsequently that class. I remember when I was living about 10 minutes outside of town, and one night I drove into town to get some food around 11pm, and the drive through wasn't too busy, so it took me maybe 5 minutes or so to get my food, and then I drove straight home. I don't know exactly what time I got home, but when I noticed the time, it was almost 3am. I didn't stop anywhere else on the way home after I got my food, and I wasn't drunk or high. Got a CT scan to see if something was going on and everything came back normal. I have no idea how a 30 minute or so drive took almost 4 hours. It still boggles my mind to this day. As a kid, walked down the street when an old woman pushing a wheelchair comes my way. The wheelchair contains what looks like a person covered completely with a thick black plastic sheet. We make eye contact, she smiles and walks past me. I didn't turn around, just walked home. 20 plus years later, I still wonder what was going on, or if it was even real. I was 18 and was asked to buy cigarettes and condoms by a handicapped guy who rightfully didn't want to do his whole wheelchair routine when getting out and back into his car. Not a lot of weird things have happened to me. I was taught to wait till marriage before having sex and didn't smoke. It was my first time purchasing both of those items. It was weird to me, but overall not that strange of an occurrence. I was walking home and happened to be passing a phone box where a small elderlyish woman was stood crying. She stopped me and asked for help. It turned out she wanted me to make a phone call for her because Frank had gone down to London and they'd killed him. I made the call and left a message on an answering machine on behalf of Mary and said exactly that. I was looking around for any vans or anything that might tell I was on a hidden camera show. I'd bloody love to know what the F happened. I was like 10 and kicked a ball very high in the air and it was 12 AM so I didn't see it at first. My neighbor yelled a few seconds later, I hear a pigeon scream and my other neighbor from the other side of the street screamed too. As it turned out, my ball hit the drone of the first neighbor, the drone fell on a pigeon and killed it and my ball. The drone and the pigeon fell into the room of a four-year-old girl. When the mother came in, she screamed. That was really strange. Being locked out of our apartment buck naked when we first arrived in Germany, my husband was in the military, PE was at 0530. I watched the car drive away and I pondered if I could stay outside in November for two hours until he came home. When the little old man across the road started his tractor to putter toward me into his field, well hell, time to wake up the landlord. I didn't speak any German yet, he spoke no English. After knocking on the door for about five minutes, he opens it, and a naked 25-year-old woman is there pantomiming the need for a key. Strange but true. Edit. To explain the story better, I sleep naked. I hate wearing pajamas or even a t-shirt. At the time I got locked out, we had two kittens. As I was going out to retrieve one and tossed it inside, as I was turning around to go back into the apartment, the other kitten closed the door on me. These were the kind of doors that locked automatically when shut. When I was in middle school, sometimes my dad would be downstairs watching TV and would go upstairs to sleep without turning it off. In the mornings, this channel would end up playing the news at around 4 in the morning. This night, I had come home late from a party with my friends. I was tired and didn't feel like walking up the stairs, so I just slept on the couch. Fast forward a few hours of sleeping, I think it was around 4.30ish, I woke up and I couldn't move. My head was locked, staring at the screen, and my body felt paralyzed, then out of nowhere, the reporter on the news said my name clear as day. He said to me, how did you sleep? This isn't real. You're not here right now. That looks uncomfortable. Definitely things a news reporter wouldn't be saying, especially after saying my name multiple times to get my attention. I regained my movement and immediately turned off the TV. Since then, I refuse to watch the news unless that reporter isn't there. So I live out of district from my school and take a van to and from school. One morning, keep in mind I stayed up all night the previous night, we were turning a corner and I see a, I think white truck parked in the dry grass on the side of the road. The corner we turned was over some train tracks. In the truck, I saw a bald guy with wide eyes and a creepy smile. A good way to explain the face is to search up Henry Eats. 
Uh, I'm a warn you, though, it'll give you nightmares. Anyway, I didn't think anything of the face until we drove too far past the truck that I couldn't see in the window anymore. Was I just really tired? I'm known for seeing and hearing things then most likely aren't there. I still wonder to this day, am I just crazy? When I was a kid, I got really high fever one night and started to hallucinate. It was probably 25 years ago, and I still vividly remember what I saw while hallucinating. My closet door was open, and there was a shelf that ran across the top of the closet. I saw what appeared to be smoke or fog materialize on top of the closet shelf. The fog started to morph into odd shapes, and then a human face. At this point, I was sitting up in my bed, watching this thing distort right before my eyes. Multiple faces started to form in this growing ball of fog in my closet, and then the faces noticed me looking at them. The normal expressions on the faces changed to an extreme anger, and then aggressively flew out of the closet straight at me. I screamed so loud I woke up everyone in the house up. I ran so fast that I made it out of my bedroom, through the basement, up the stairs, and through the kitchen before my parents made it out of their bedroom. I didn't sleep in the basement for years after that night. I was at a restaurant with my uncle and his friends when I was about 19. It was a warm summer night. The restaurant's doors were open and it was dark outside. Suddenly, lights were twinkling in the doorway. I knew they were not actually there, that no one else could see them, but I saw them and thought someone special is going to walk through that door. Anyway, a guy on the Vancouver Morning News named Jay Janower walked in. I knew who he was, but thought it was kind of funny, as I'd never had expected him in a million years. Actually, it was bizarre. When I was younger, I used to DJ, username checks out, and I rocked up at what was supposed to be an illegal party in a nature park. A few mates had hired trucks with roll-up sides, and the idea was that by the time the cops could get there, there would be like 500 plus people partying, and they wouldn't have the resources to shut it down. When I rocked up, there however to help set up, the cops had cottoned on early and started breaking it up. All the infrastructure was there, just not many punters yet. A bunch of the event organizers are arguing with the police and there are a bunch of people scrambling to get the party rolling just for the fun of it. I hear one of the generators boot up and one of the event organizers sees me and throws me into the back of one of these trucks and is just like, just effing play something, I'll guard the door. Anyway, I could see there was already a CDJ set up and I hit play and a few dozen munters all start dancing and trying to keep the police away from the truck. I hear someone start pounding on the door at the back of the truck. The It looked locked from the inside and I'm pretty sure it's a cop so I ignore it. It keeps looking at the decks and try and work out what the next track would be. Then I hear someone landing firm hard kicks to the door and I know it's time to yeet the F out. I jump over the decks and land face first in the dirt in front of them left the music going, and there's a cop who saw me and is trying to get through the crowd, but the dancers are all stopping him from getting to me. I recover enough sense to get up and leg it and make a bolt up the street where I can see a mate has just rocked up in his car. He sees me running at him, with a cop following me, apparently, and he runs back to his car, and he dukes of hazard style launch in the window as he takes off. That friend also happens to be my hookup for the night and was holding a bag of acid hits. We managed to quickly liaise with a couple of other friends in the local area, and the four of us drove around for a bit, wondering what we should do. In the end, we rocked up at an airport. It was pouring sheets of rain. We dropped acid and lay in the grass near the end of the runway, just outside the fence, and we watched cargo planes land over us while we tripped balls. I remember in second grade I was flipping through my yearbook and I saw a girl in the yearbook who I thought had a cool last name and I started imagining a whole friendship with her and thinking wouldn't it be fun if I became friends with her? Two years later in fourth grade I became friends with a girl during play practice and we became best friends for many years but when I learned her last name about a couple of months into our friendship I realized it was the same girl. This happened for me when I was 12. Me and my other friends play tag in the middle of the road while cars, bikes, and vehicles drive by. Then, when I was the last one didn't tag, I run as fast as possible to not tag, then I saw a bike head towards me. Yes, I saw it, but for some odd reason my body moved where the bike was headed to. Yeah, the bike hit me. I was unconscious for like seconds, 
only because my body was built different. Then I say sorry to the dude that hit me, we good? But it gave me a scar on my leg, and also for an odd reason I just laughed it off. My friends were worried while me and my leg bleeding, shaking like crazy and don't know what to do, laughing because I'm stupid. Yeah, my friends told my parents. They yell and ground me for days, so yeah, this is weird. Okay, I'll share this, but then I'll probably die in a single car accident. In the early 80s, I attended a college which is part of a prominent California university system. At the time, my college town was not nearly as built up as it is now, and both my friend and I believed a certain road would cut through from our college to the freeway. Spoiler alert, it didn't. Anyway, I drive down this road and it narrows from two lanes in each direction to one lane in each direction to just one lane for both directions. Then it becomes a dirt road. In the meantime, I travel from a scattering of apartments around me to a more rural landscape to nothing but scrub. Or, rather I should say that there was nothing but scrub on my left. On my right appeared fencing about the time the road became a dirt road. First the fence was 6 feet, then 8 feet, then 12. Then it was topped with razor wire and electrified. And by electrified, I mean there were signs warning of immediate death should one touch the fence. Also upon the fence were signs saying that the area was property of the university system that I attended. Behind the fence were greenhouses, row upon row of greenhouses covered with green netting so that their interiors were obscured. I'm utterly freaked out, but the road is so narrow between the electrified fence and the big scrub brushes that I can't hang a convenient turn. I stupidly drive on. I finally reach the end of the fence and there's a gate, the entrance to this weird greenhouse area. Two guys in cowboy boots, jeans, flannel shirts, and cowboy hats with shotguns casually draped across their arms are leaning against this gate. By the way, they do not actually look like cowboys due to their haircuts, demeanor, etc. One of them stands up and walks over to my driver's side. I tell him I'm lost. He tells me I certainly am. I tell him I'll turn around. He tells me I certainly will. I make a 47 point U-turn and hightail it out of there. Now fast forward about 25 years and about 500 miles. I'm living in a completely different city and I'm having lunch with the lady from my church and her husband. She mentions that they used to live in the town I went to college in and somehow end up telling them this story. She looks at her husband and says, honey, you were at that military base near there. What was in it that she saw? He stopped smiling and said that I was completely wrong and that nothing was there or even had been there. When she persisted, he raised his voice and told her to change the subject. This was a woman who was never told what to do by her husband and she was not a happy camper, but she left it alone, at least while I was there. I have no idea what my university system was growing out there, but it was creepy as f. It's not uncommon for universities to get government funding and grant money to do some type of research, but with all that security, definitely makes you wonder what was really in those greenhouses. Slept over at my girlfriend's house as a teenager, woke up around 2am to pee or something, noticed a man in the driveway staring at her window. Her bedroom was on the second floor so I'm pretty sure he couldn't see me but he stood unnaturally still and seemed very focused on her window. I go back to bed and don't think more about it. Like an hour later my girlfriend wakes up and goes to the bathroom. When she comes back she seems startled tells me there's a man outside staring at her window. I'm like, damn, he's still there? We observed him for 15 to 20 minutes or something before I convince her to come back to bed with me. I think we talk or have sex or something, but afterwards she goes up to check again and he's gone. Don't know who he was or why he was standing outside for more than an hour in the middle of the night during winter. I have some thoughts. It happened on Halloween sometime in the early 1970s. I was walking out of my grandparents' house trick-or-treating with my mother and all of a sudden we heard this strange high-pitched thrumming sound from above. Looked up and we could see this object that appeared to be a ring that had multiple colored lights flashing clockwise around the outboard side with another set of multicolored lights flashing counterclockwise. It was traveling in a southeast to northwest direction, similar to a flight path planes landing at the airport take. Suddenly, the object went quiet then immediately changed direction and to the northeast, then flew straight up until it was too far up to see. When that happened, there was absolutely no sound whatsoever, not even the sound that any conventional propulsion system would make. 
I later on was told that several dozen other people witnessed and reported the same thing. No explanation was ever given. I've got a few stories from my childhood. The earliest I can remember was when I was about four years old. I loved helium balloons. I'd often go to the hot air balloon shows and all. One time I had a helium balloon and it would follow me around the house. Like, I'd leave the room and not long after it would slowly float into the same room. It wasn't just single rooms either. It would be able to navigate its way through bendy hallways and all. I, being young, thought it was really cool that this balloon must have been alive. I told my parents and they kind of shrugged it off. So to prove to them, I placed the balloon on one side of the house and told them to wait at the front door with me. Unsurprising to me, it navigated its way through the whole house to the front door and stopped. My parents said it must have been wind going through the house. Next day, my balloon was gone and my parents claimed to have no idea about it. I asked my mom years later and she admitted she got rid of it because it freaked her out too much and they knew from the moment I got it that it was following me around. Second story. So, this stuff was happening when I was closer to seven. I have a bad case of nightmares like all the time. Always about stuff chasing me or dreams where I'd be see myself standing in front of myself but without any eyeballs and an open mouth pointing at me. I'd remember sitting up really quickly, waking up from my nightmare but it wouldn't be once. I'd wake up like four to five times really quickly, jolting up as if I was waking up from multiple dreams. One time I got out of bed to go to the toilet and I remember the house was really dark but I could still see stuff and on my way to the bathroom I saw heaps of disfigured warped black shapes walking at the end of the house. I'd just stand there and look at them until my dad would tap me on the shoulder to which the light was turned on and there were no more dark shapes. He would tell me that I was sleepwalking and that I was calling out his name. It was weird because I could see where I was going while doing it. A couple years later, parents are split by this point and while visiting my dad I begin to notice whenever I turn my head there's always a dark thing in the corner that rushes behind a door but only if I wasn't looking for it whenever my intention to find it wasn't there. My dad denied there being anything and only ever saw them at his house. Fast forward a few more years and I'm about 12. I'm living with my much my younger brother and sister. We live in this older home and I remember I was still having terrible nightmares. I was never a sleeper I might add. I was able to live on 4 hours of sleep and couldn't sleep in the daytime at all. I woke up one morning around 3am and decided to play on my DS. My mom had a no getting up until 6am policy so I'd stay quiet in my room. My room was right next to the kitchen where I had a clear view of the front door, bathroom door and stairs leading to the second story. I'd sleep with the door open and hallway light on since I was scared of complete darkness. One night I heard the fridge door open and the kettle turn on so I thought my mom was awake. I went out to the kitchen and there was nothing there, no kettle on or anything. I was kind of freaked due to my past experiences, asked my mom and she denied anything. A couple days later on my DS and I hear a pot put on the stove and then drop on the floor really loud. I go out to the kitchen and nothing. Pot is on the drying rack. Once again, my mom denied. A couple nights later, I wake up to go to the bathroom to do my business and come back as I pulled my blanket up to my chest. I hear something call out my name, really deep voice, slightly distorted. It called my name a second time. I didn't move a muscle. Then it started asking me if I was there and I got really angry in its voice. I sat there frozen for three hours until my mom got up and she noticed I wasn't up. So she came to my room where she said I was super white and sweaty. I told her what happens and she said it was probably a dream. I started crying telling her it wasn't and that she needed to believe me. Later that day she pulled me to the side and said that she believes me and that she's been hearing things too. She said that one time she was sitting in the kitchen folding laundry when she heard a dog growl behind her. We didn't have a dog at this time. She said another time she heard kids laughing and came downstairs to tell us to go to bed but we were fast asleep. We weren't very religious people but my mom decided to get some church folk to come in and cleanse the house. They said there was something bad there and that they had to get someone better. That person came, did their thing and for a few months my nightmare stopped. No random noises, nothing. We got ourselves a little puppy dog and after a few months he started acting strange. We would be petting him inside 
and he would just freeze and stare over our shoulder. Eventually, he would start growling over our shoulder. I woke up to the stairs creaking and went out there, which no one was on them. My nightmares started again a little before, too. It got to the point where my dog would run up the stairs to my mom's room, bark into it, then we would chase after him to get to him, then he would race down the stairs into my room, barking at the corner of each room. By that point, we just knew we had to leave. So we moved the house, and since then, my nightmares stopped, no more odd stuff happening, nothing since. I don't not believe in ghosts, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they were real, either. My friends and I were out of the country in the boonies cruising, and I was in the truck with my friends, and we got a flat tire. My other friends were in the car behind us. They stopped and shined their headlights on the truck so we could change it. We just happened to stop in front of an old abandoned farmhouse. I swear I saw someone standing in the barn but played it off as nothing. The tire under the truck was held on by a bracket and it was rusted bad and we couldn't get it unscrewed. We go to town to get a hacksaw, go back out to the truck and the tire was laying on the ground right behind the truck, looked at the bracket and it was still rusted on there and didn't move. Everyone jumped in the vehicles and locked the doors while we changed the tire. I was freaked the F out. To this day, I know what I saw and what happened and it gives me chills to even think about that night. I always like to act like I'm a skeptic. In my life, I've had only one experience that truly left me pondering the supernatural, the rake. I used to wake up with sleep paralysis from ages 12 to 17. It was somewhat regular. At age 16, I saw something for the first time. I woke up sharply, feeling a presence which was new. I was a very anxious kid, so I immediately peered around my limited vision, standing as upright as I could be in the corner of the room was a thin, humanoid shape. I closed my eyes out of fear and must have lay there for hours before drifting off. Months later, I woke up again for the first time since then. I peered down past my feet and an outline of the top of a head stared back at me. Again, I closed my eyes fearing the end. This time, only morning brought me release. Not a month after the second time seeing something, I was driving home from work. Now freshly 16 and driving my first car, I felt amazing. I got off the highway and hit a long 55 mile per hour country road that took me the rest of the way to my town. I flicked on my brights and turned the music up a bit. The road was known to be dangerous between deer and its sheer state of disrepair. I was speeding. Suddenly, I saw a figure on the side of the road. It was crouching over what appeared to be a bag. I took my foot off the gas and coasted down a bit in speed. As I drew nearer, I saw it wasn't a bag. It was a dead deer. Going 45 miles per hour now, I gave the figure one good look as I flew by. Its face was ghoulishly thin, white, ghastly body proportions. Four months later, I was an eight-hour drive north of that town working at a summer camp. I'd been up there for a few weeks and high school week finally rolled around. I got to camp instead of work for a week. I get in the zone, got placed in a competitive cabin, and got close to the other boys quickly. Thursday night was the camp out night. This camp was in Michigan, on the edge of the Huron National Forest. We would hike on an access road miles deep into the forest and find a spot to sleep under the stars. I remember passing the 18 mile marker, which is only 5 miles from the camp. The access road started beyond the other side of the camp. This left us about 5 miles due northwest of camp. We played all sorts of games, and soon it was dark. As the eight of us sat around the campfire with our counselor, a boy straight across the fire from me jerked to attention looking at something beyond me. I swung around with two other people and saw the tail of something vanishing down the path we'd forged through the brush to find our camping spot. He seemed shaken, but didn't even mention it. Later, as we're winding down the fire, he suddenly yelps and points through me. As everyone does, I whip around. At the edge of the brush, not even 15 yards from me, was the ghastly humanoid features I had seen in my room, and leering back was the same ghoulish face I had seen on the side of the road. It turned and did a disgusting crouched run back toward the path, using its hands for only every third or fourth stride. Everyone was completely shaken. I'm now almost 21, and I've never seen anything of the sort again. After that final encounter, I didn't experience sleep paralysis again. 
As the tale of the rake goes, it appears in your sleep first, and every time you see it, it gathers closer to you until it's almost touching. Then you start to see it in real life until it's ready to take you. When I was about seven or eight, I woke up to the sound of our dog barking furiously. Just outside one of our windows was the well house and her dog house was attached to one side. I remember her barking viciously, which usually meant there were coyotes or raccoons in the yard. I sat up, about to check for coyotes. My dad was a heavy sleeper. I've often had to wake him up to shoot coyotes before he let me have an air rifle. When I heard our dog yelp, our dog was a scrappy black lab who would spend half the night chasing and fighting creatures of the night. She never backed down from a fight, which is why we often kept her in a long chain at night. She would sound the alarm, and we would chase off the coyotes from the yard, kept her from getting seriously hurt. I say this because I had never heard her yelp. Seconds after she yelps, I hear and see something big running between my window and the well house. I could hear ragged breathing and galloping, and as it passed by my window, I saw the outline of its hunched back filling half of my window pane. Our house sat on a two-foot stone foundation, and my windows were about six feet off the ground. This thing had to be at least eight feet tall, possibly taller, since it sounded like it was galloping on four legs. I heard it pause for just a second to jump the fence about 20 feet from my room before it continued on and faded into the night. I'll never forget sitting frozen in bed listening to its ragged breathing and footfalls rapidly fading away. Dog didn't bark the rest of the night. She was probably hiding in her doghouse and it took me a while before I could lay down and fall back asleep. There was a window right next to the head of the bed and I was terrified that I would lay down and see the face of the beast staring at me. Never mentioned it to my family. Figured they wouldn't believe me anyways. Obviously, don't know where you live, but could it have possibly been some type of bear? Maybe? I don't know. What do you guys think? This is something that happened when I was crazy young, so details are foggy and I genuinely cannot explain it. It was a Sunday night and my family had some aunts and uncles over. Being a sibling of four other kids and the youngest of the kids, I often were playing while the older kids were hanging out with parents and such. Anywho, everyone was huddled around the TV watching some football game and I was standing on the couch, leaning on the back and looking out the window. It was around 7pm and everything was dark so I couldn't really see much. Now this is where things get weird. I recall seeing someone in our backyard, a younger woman in a bikini, sitting on our toy slide. Except the light that was hitting her only showed her torso and legs from the knees up. I couldn't see her face. I was freaking out that someone was in the backyard and started to yank at my mom's pants to get her attention and I just said, someone's on the slide outside. To which my mom replied, nobody is out there. Well, I turned back and the light on her was gone. That was until I noticed a lighthouse-esque rotating light beam that hit on the slide again. She was there, just sitting there. I couldn't see her face, only the lower body. Next day I went outside to look at the slide and see if I'd mistaken it for anything but there was nothing there, just the slide. It's important to note there are no lighthouses in my town and the only thing I could think of would be some searchlight from a helicopter. This is something I've spent years trying to find an answer for but I just cannot. I still have dreams and nightmares about it to this day, 17 years later. In college one weekend I was driving to a TV station I worked at from my girlfriend's place who lived on campus about two hours away at the time. Got pulled over for going five over the limit ugh, through a dirt poor old mining town. Being a poor college student the traffic ticket put my bank account into the red by $40 with major bills due the next day. Freaking out about how I'm not going to have money to live for another two weeks and get charged even more in overdraft fees. I get out of my car and start walking to the door of the station when I look down and lo and behold $40 is chilling on the sidewalk. It was early AF in the morning and I was the first and only person there to clock in. I don't believe in guardian angels but I'll be damned if that wasn't one of the most serendipitous moments of my life. I was driving south from northern Ontario one year. I'm talking up near Hearst on my way to Toronto when I was at university. If anybody is unfamiliar with the area, northern Ontario is a vast spread of Canadian shield, rocky landscape and dense brush. A bunch of relatively small mining towns spread it over like a 300 kilometer radius. 
It's kind of eerie on Highway 11 as the most depressing stretch of highway I've ever been on. For anybody familiar with it, close to midnight, and I'm past Kirkland Lake Cutoff, and decide to stop at the next stop, diner, whatever, to get a coffee and stretch the legs. I pull off right near Englehart, Peel, and the Tim Hortons and go into the bathroom. After I come out, I grab a coffee and a snack and sit down to eat it. About 10 minutes go by, and this old lady sits down at my table. There's nobody else in the shop apart from this lady's behind the counter. At first, she didn't say anything, just looked at me, and she could probably tell I was a little freaked out. Finally, she just went, Truss, it's so good to see you. How have you been? How is dad's name and mom's name and has sister's name finished up with school? I started to shake. I was so nervous and asked her how she knew who I was and that was I was there, had never been there before and was a little freaked out. She got up super quietly again, just smiling, told me they've been keeping an eye on me and then she left and that was the end of it. I don't know who she was or how she knew me, but at midnight, in a little bum F town in northern Ontario in the middle of the night was enough to freak me out for the next little while. I'm late to this thread, but my friend's dad had a story that he told us when we were old enough to not be too weirded out by it. He was driving to work on his motorbike one morning when he saw an object in the distance hovering in the sky. He felt an overwhelming sense of curiosity. So he pulled over onto the hard shoulder so he could get a proper look at it. After a minute or so, it disappeared, so he set back off to work. When he arrived at his office, his manager looked confused and asked him what was going on. Turns out he was three hours late to work. He couldn't understand what had happened and could not explain why he was late. He still to this day cannot account for the missing time and swears that he was only pulled over on the side of the road for a few minutes. This happened around two years ago, and I still have trouble sleeping in my room sometimes. I was in a dead sleep in my room when I heard my mom calling for me. She sounded sick, so I sat up in bed and called out to her, but no reply. When I look to my door, it's across the room from my bed, a woman is standing there with long black hair. I can only see her hair because it's mainly covering her face, and she's peering around my door frame, which the area between the wall outside and my door frame is only like an inch. My mom has black hair, so assuming it was her, I called out again. This time, whatever the hell this was, confirmed it wasn't my mom by swiftly turning around and pounding down the hallway running. Safe to say, I was terrified and stayed up all night after that. It couldn't have been sleep paralysis because I sat up and hid, and not a dream either because my cat was still sleeping on the foot of my bed. I've had a tough time this year dealing with a car accident that activated my PTSD and anxiety from a near-death accident drunk driver over 10 years ago. I started meditating and exercising a lot and just learning how to let go of the past and future and live in the present. I'm not religious, but during a break at work a few weeks ago, I decided to pray while meditating in my car. My grandma died in 07, and while we didn't have the happiest relationship, I think about her often and miss her a lot. While I was praying, I prayed to my grandma and in my head said, I hope you're proud of me, grandma. I'm really doing my best to be present and a parent that I never had. I wish you were still here to see your great grandchildren. And as soon as I finished that thought, my car horn honked itself twice. Not like when you lock the car, but a short beep and a long honk. I've always been completely against the idea of paranormal stuff or spirits, but there was no other explanation. I also felt a sort of peace just come over me in the moment that felt like it came from outside of me. So a few days later, I'm laying in my bed thinking about the experience and think, whatever, maybe spirits are real, Grandma. If that was really you the other day, just give me some sort of sign and I'll stay on the path I'm on. As soon as the thought finished, the light on the ceiling fan in my room blinked off and on twice. It's never once done that in three years living here. The same peaceful feeling also overcame me. I haven't really shared these experiences because I know I'd be laughed at and anybody sharing such a thing if they were telling me the same thing up until that first experience in my car. I don't know. Maybe we do live in a mark on this world. Maybe it was all just coincidence. But it didn't feel that way to me. I went on a walk with my then girlfriend at the time, just a small little trail in our apartment complex. Random man stops us and asks how our day is going. Formalities are exchanged and he asks my girlfriend to see her hand. 
She hesitantly obliges. He proceeds to list off personal things about her, down to very specific details that there is no way you can just take a shot in the dark at and get right. After everything he would get right about her, I could see her slowly break down, from confused to her eyes watering and having tears rolling down her face. He then tells us that she has greener pastures without me. She broke up with me like a month later. The last thing he told us was to buy scratch-off lottery tickets on a night with a full moon on specific days and to scratch them off at night. My ex ended up winning like 70 bucks on one of those. I ended up living at that apartment complex for another five months and I never saw that man again. We actively tried looking for him and he still comes up in conversation. His name was Mr. Joe's. If by any chance you read this, F you for saying she could do better. Either Mr. Joe's was a psychic, palm reading aficionado, or he was reading a little bit more than your girl's palm. Mm. Not sure this is so much as me seeing something as being a part of something. Anyways, this was a couple of years back, so the details are getting a bit fuzzy, but some of it will stay with me forever. So it's December, and I'm supposed to take the train to school. At 7, this means it's fairly dark outside, and with coats and hats and all that, you can't really see the faces of the people you meet. The train platform is made of wood and up at the height, meaning that the people down in the street can't see you, and you can't see them. Coming up to the platform, there's two guys already standing there. They're both exactly 5 meters apart. I too walk up and stand 5 meters off from the guy nearest to me. On the other side of the platform, a fourth person shows up. They too stood 5 meters off. We're now all standing in a perfect line, and then we took a step forward with our right foot. What comes to follow is quite possibly some of history's oddest synchronized dancing. We would take side steps at the same time, turn back at the same time, we even spun around on the spot at the same time. I don't remember all the exact movements, but I do remember looking over to the other people and wondering, why in the hell are you also doing this? But the truth is I didn't even know why I was doing it. It wasn't like I wasn't in control of my own body, the complete opposite actually. I tried to consciously choose my next movement, but the other guys would still follow. For some reason, this did not at all disturb me and actually all felt quite nice, like just belonging to something, like this was something we were meant to do. I'm not sure how long this went on, probably not long at all, but some lady showed up about three minutes before the train and it was and the spell broke. After that, we just kind of started moving around all over the platform instead of one of the guys went to sit down. All in all, probably the weirdest morning of my life. I was 19 at the time and spent the summer days with my best friend at his parents' house in the countryside of Virginia. One particular night, our chit-chatting dwindled down as we were planning activities for the next day. Planning a New York City trip, I believe. We were situated in his sister's room since she had been working at the computer. My buddy was searching for hotels. Back to me and I was laying on the floor facing the doorway that led out to the hall. His sister's room was the last room down the hall adjacent to the bathroom at the end of the hall. If someone were to use the bathroom, they would have to pass his sister's room first. Anyway. Mid-conversation, a little girl in a white dress walks right by the doorway into the bathroom. She must have been four to six years old. I immediately stood up and I remember asking my buddy, Hey, I didn't know you had people over. I was pretty sure throughout the day it was just him and me alone in the house. He has a large family and members will drop by with little to no notice. Being curious, I looked down the dark hall toward the bathroom and there was no sign of life. No one was there. His next words brought chills down my spine. It's just us here, man. My parents and everyone are out of town. Additionally, and what makes this chilling, I justified briefly that it was a family member that just stopped by with their kids, but this reasoning falls short. He's Asian along with every member of his family, Korean to be exact. This girl that walked by was Caucasian, and from what I recall, her outfit, the white dress, was not of the time, early 2000s. Bro, your house is haunted, I said. You're just tired and seeing things. The story became forgotten, never repeated, and we chalked it up to me being tired and delirious. Fast forward 12 years, and my best friend is now married and briefly lives in his parents' house with his wife and new baby. His wife wakes up one night to use the bathroom. 
On her walk there, she sees a little girl in a white dress in the hallway, freaks out, and runs back into the bedroom to tell her husband what she saw. I got a call soon after, and let's just say, I love when people tell me I'm right, despite the paranormal circumstance. Out of interest, I did a little research. The house was briefly listed for sale, and Zillow revealed the house was built in 1901. One day, I was sitting in the family room watching TV. All of a sudden, I heard a crash in the piano room across the hall. This is a small room with a baby grand piano, and only inches away is an antique china cabinet that was my grandmother's. At the time, there was a thick foam board sitting on the piano, and on top of that was a can of adhesive spray in a bag. When I went into the room to see what happened, the foam board was in the corner of the room on the floor. It looked like it had been thrown. On the wood floor, in between the piano and china cabinets, was the spray can of adhesive in the bag sitting on the floor, as if someone simply placed it there. The window in the room was closed, so there was no wind blowing through the room, since the foam board was underneath the spray can when the board was thrown into the corner of the room, the can really should have hit the glass panel in the cabinet. It's really old glass, so pretty thin and fragile. I've gone through what happened over and over for a couple of years since it happened and I cannot come up with any rational way that all this happened. Weird stuff has happened in this house. One night, at about 1am, I was up watching TV in my room. My parents were in bed. Out of nowhere, I heard loud, heavy boot steps walking down the hall on the wood floor. I was totally freaked out. Me and my cat, who was on my lap, both stare at the door as the heavy steps increasingly get louder. I throw my cat off my lap and stand frozen, thinking frantically, thinking, do I go hide in the closet or rip the screen off the window and run out of the house? I was on the first floor, but I'm frozen. I can't move and I'm terrified. Just as the steps got to my door, and someone should be right there, there was nothing. They just stopped. Me and my cat are just staring at the door thinking, what the F just happened? It took me a while to calm down before I could go to bed. I've also got a photo I took of the flooding happening in our backyard one night. When I looked at the picture, there were all kinds of orbs in various sizes all over. It almost looks like there was uh, facial structures in them. It's bizarre. <laughs>